Here's Graham to give his talk. Let's have a conversation. Uh, hi there, hi there. Uh, so I guess, as, as Gavin said, I work for a company called Scott Logic. We're an IT consultancy, and we work with, I, I guess, all the bad people with money who lose money, who you know we all kind of love and hate in equal measure because they prop up our economy and ruin it and keep us all on edge. Um, so what you'll see is I, I, um, I'm going to do some demos and stuff, and it'll be quite sort of banking-oriented, um, but what I'm talking about is quite uh, generic and general. So. Um, just, just roll with it. It'll all make, mess, make sense as I go along. Um, so what I want to talk about is something that is, is coming all of our way. Um, it's, it's arguably already here, but a lot of us haven't really been exposed to it so much. Um, and, and that's as much as a preview as I'm going to give you. Um, so I wanted to start with, with show of hands, because no one's done this yet today. Um, hands up if you've got a smartphone. Oh, who'd have guessed it? Practically everyone. Um, who here uses WhatsApp? on that smartphone? Hmm, not as many as I expected, um, but still most. Who here uses Facebook Messenger? Still most of you. Um, who here uses Slack or iMessage or Skype or WeChat or any of the hundreds and another hundreds of messaging applications? Right, so practically everyone uses messaging on their phone. Um, so we've anecdotally sort of confirmed the broader research that's happened. Um, and what it's telling us here is it's back in uh, 2015, Actually, the messaging apps, that their monthly usage overtook um, social network apps, uh, which were the previous big rainers. Um, and that's almost 3 billion people are actively using messaging apps every month in 2015. That number has only gone up. Um, I don't, can't give you the exact number, but uh, that's practically everyone with a smartphone. Um, if, I, if I look on the biggest player at the moment, WhatsApp, um, just look at some of their numbers, uh, that's a billion monthly active users that they claim to have. Uh, that's a lot of people. Um, and on average, those people are using it for just over three hours a week. It's an incredible amount for messaging. Um, there's probably just a few teenagers who never, ever go on to anything else, screen those numbers. But still, um, that's a lot of people using that application a lot. Um, and if you throw in sort of SMS and all the other types of things as well, it's no wonder that this is becoming or has become the most familiar interface to, to most people, um, actually, who have any exposure to technology. My um, granny knows how to use this. She doesn't know how to use most apps, but she can do this. She can do messaging. She understands that interface, um, because it's what most of us do on our smartphones these days. Um, OK, lovely. I've talked about messaging. Great. Um, but it doesn't have that much rele relevance to you, you may say. Um, but when we're designing and building services, our typical approach on mobile is to say, well, let's just build an app. Um, let's you know, put it in an app and people will download it, it'll be fine. Um, but again, research kind of suggests that people don't tend to download apps. They tend to stick with the things they're already using. Um, these figures are a little bit old, but I suspect it's only got worse. You know, that's uh, about two thirds of people don't download apps on their smartphones. Um, so if instead of making people sort of download our apps, instead of making them come to us where we've put our service, why don't we take our services to where the people are in those messaging applications? Um, and that's, that's what I want to talk about. Um, I'll sort of paint a picture for you. you know, what, if it, what if instead of um, my bank phoning me about a possibly fraudulent transaction um, and sort of disrupting my life or interrupting whatever meeting I'm in, um, what if instead they, ha ha, this is my phone here, this is where the live demo always goes wrong, well hey, um, what if instead um, they simply messaged me in Facebook Messenger? Now, it's not as disruptive, but it's still pretty, uh, pretty urgent. So I pick this up and it tells me that um, some transaction to shadygames.net has gone through. Uh, was this me? But it, it, I have an opportunity to interact here now, and I, can, I don't know what Shady Games is, but you know, sometimes you see on your bank statement something that you either can't remember or it's just a different name to the entity you actually bought it through. Um, so maybe we question that. Uh, if you like watching people type on a smartphone, you are going to love this talk, by the way. <laughs> um, right, so it goes and tries to sort of find out what Shady Games is for me and tells me it's an online computer game shop. Um, and as a young white male, of course, I'd never do anything with computer games, so I'll say it's fraud. Uh, great. So there it tells me that it's actually just going to reverse those transactions. And, and suddenly I could have done that in my own time. I could have, um, instead of 
having to respond to it immediately, I could have waited a little bit and, and just done it when I needed. Um, I'll paint a different picture. Um, what if instead of downloading another crappy airline app just to get the boarding pass on my phone, it could just be delivered to me in Messenger? Now, uh, KLM already does this. If you're a Messenger user, um, you can get your boarding pass in Messenger. Um, Iceland Air now do it as well. Um, it's as if there's a, a fad happening here. Um, this is this world of chatbots. Chatbots is the term that is sort of being bandied about in the press. And I'll come back to why I don't like that term in, in a few minutes. Um, but you quite rightly should be quite skeptical about this stuff that's going on. Um, it, it could well be another fad. I'm, I'm not sure it's another sort of flat design versus skeuomorphism change or long shadows or something small like that. I think it is something more significant. Um, and, and I. So the, the seed of that is if we look to the, to the east, to China, um, this is the logo for WeChat, which is not very popular over here. Um, but in China, there's 750 million monthly active users using WeChat. This is their main messaging app. It does a whole heap of other things. It sort of does Twitter and everything as well. Um, China's always a special case. Um, but it actually supports all sorts of uh, mini applications and actually lets you do services within the same application. So uh, this is an example. My, I, haven't, I can't read Chinese at all, um, but someone else annotated this image for me quite helpfully. This is the Dior um, official channel, and they've got on the left-hand side, that'd be the screen where you're seeing sort of the messages that um, Dior is wanting to push you about probably some fashion stuff. I have no idea. Um, and then there's a button where I can go and find out st uh, the stores and, and find the location. So I can sort of interact with that service in the same rough context as, as um, the messaging, but it's sort of next to it rather than within it. Uh, and that's where chatbots are sort of the next step on. They're, they're actually putting the service into the messaging, into the communication. So here I could buy uh, possibly some clothes from Peter's Apparel by talking to Peter's Apparel rather than just pre pressing some buttons that happen to be next to whatever it's promoting. Um, and that's why we get these hyperbolic statements like chatbots are the new apps. Um, you can tell it's hyperbolic because it says Microsoft underneath. Um, <laughs> I should add, um, you know, Facebook and a lot of the other players have made very similar statements, just not quite as hyperbolic. Um, and those that haven't outright stated that this is a direction that um, they're at least playing with um, have sort of implied it. I mean, all the big messaging applications, except for WhatsApp, um, have opened up to third-party integrations. I mean, even Siri now, third parties can integrate their services into Siri. Um, and Google, with its new Google Home, um, lets you integrate into it with third-party services. And uh, suddenly, actually, this is actually a, a real possibility to put our services into the messaging and into these conversations. Um, OK, so you now want to make one, because it's so exciting. Um, I'm going to give you a really high-level picture of how you make these things. Now, the, the nicest thing as, as sort of app designers and developers is, is the thing that's a massive headache, getting applications onto people's uh, devices is not your problem. It's taken care of. You don't have to build an iOS version and an Android version. Uh, the messaging app does that for you. Um, all you have to worry about, not all, is the massive black box behind the scenes that, that talks back to it. In some ways, that's nice, though, because that's in your control. That's on your servers or deployed in whichever way you want. If you want to make small tweaks every few minutes, you do that. If you want to do A-B testing, you do that. If you want to, I don't know, fix some massive change or take the whole thing down, you do that whenever you want to. You just have to stay on the back end there. You have no worry about clients not downloading the latest version to get the latest um, behavior or anything like that. Um, so one way you might do this, and a lot of sort of the lean way of doing it is just to put people on the other side, just have support staff doing that. And there's, there's quite substantial startups um, over in the States who basically just have a bunch of people behind the scenes who will do whatever you want for them. Um, this one's called operator. Um, but if you wanted to automate all this stuff, which is probably you know, realistically where you want to head, and that's where those people who have just huge customer uh, service banks behind the scenes, they do eventually want to automate this stuff. What you end up doing is putting a sort of magic AI layer on top of your existing systems. Um, it's, it's not really magic. I mean, AI is not that good. Um, but when we're talking about these conversational apps, the main piece of AI, and like AI is huge. It's a huge field, loads of different things going on. The main piece we use is natural language processing. So the idea that I can give a sentence, an utterance to a piece of AI and say, right, tell me what he means, and it comes back and tells me what that means. Um, 
and, and actually this is, this is now just a commodity. This is no longer a special fancy thing that no one has access to. All the big players have APIs you can use to do this natural language processing and many other AI things for you. You know, IBM, Microsoft, TensorFlow and Parse, Parseflace, that's Google, um, they always get the best names. Wit.ai is Facebook, um, API.ai has just been bought by Google. You know, they're all actually providing these services and there's loads of smaller versions. Um, they're all using the same decade old algorithms. Um, they're just ultimately just parsing the natural language for you. Um, but the key here is, is this AI is dumb. Um, it's using a technique called supervised learning um, where ultimately uh, you have to teach it. I mean, in the case of natural language processing, uh, it, it understands, say, English, or, or actually increasingly quite a lot of different languages, and it can you know, parse sentences brilliantly, but it can't apply sort of a semantic understanding to those sentences. So you, as the designer or developer, have to teach the AI that, um, which is quite a tedious task, and it's quite um, long-winded, uh, and that's, that's the least fun part of creating these bots, um, at least... Uh, once you've had to do it quite a lot, which I have. Um, so typically, actually, what you do is you, you put a small bank of people in there as well. So you try and get the AI to deal with sort of the, the big 80% um, of problems. And then whenever the AI starts to bug out because someone's trying to flirt with the bot or something daft like that, you get it to fall over onto to the human side and they can, they can pick it up. And that same team will help um, teach and improve the AI over time. That's as techy as I'm getting, don't worry. Um, right, so let's go build chatbots, right? Uh, and I said, no, like, like, let's not build chatbots. Just hear me out. Um, I mentioned that dumb AI bit. Um, this is why I hate the term chatbot. Um, it, they're not good at chat. They're really, really not good at chat. Uh, I mean, we've been trying to get AI to do chat f since the 60s, since Eliza came out, um, and they can't do it. Like, it's, I'm sure you are fantastically brilliant designers and developers, but I'm not so confident that you're suddenly going to crack the ability for AI to do chat overnight. Um, so let's, let's not do chat. I mean, the other point here is, do you really want your service to chat to you? Um, if I'm talking to my bank, do I want them to ask me about the weather? No, I just want you to do the thing that I want you to do. Um, so I'll give you a little example here, um, a, a little demo again. This one I'm, I'm doing in Slack. Um, for reasons some of you may appreciate, but it doesn't really matter. Um, this is my colleague, Rui, up in Edinburgh, um, who hopefully is actually at his machine. If not, he's going to be in trouble. <laughs> um, and we'll see how this goes. Otherwise, I'm jumping to a video. This is a problem when you're actually demoing real-time chat, you realize how not real-time it is. Um, so let's paint a picture here. I, I'm asking him and he's saying, you know, do you want to go out for dinner with a bunch of us tonight? And I'm sitting there thinking, I'm not sure how much money I've got in my bank balance. Well, Slack and some of these other platforms let you do sort of like command type of stuff. This isn't chat, but I can, I've set this up so that um, I can query my balance in this conversation. Now, it, it, it says very clearly this is only visible to me. Like, really can't see this balance, um, but it's given me an idea of how much money I've got to spend. I've got 100 quid. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, why not? Let's, let's go for dinner. Um, it's not as romantic as that sounds. Um, <laughs> so suppose 24 hours has passed now, and as it happens, I paid for everyone. There were four of us, let's say, that were out for dinner. Um, and I want to get him to cough up. Uh, so obviously, I don't ask him directly, because uh, that would be far too not British. Um, so I asked him if he had a good time last night on my dollar. Um, oh, he's typing. He's typing. What's he going to say? If he says he has a bad time, I'm so thrown here. Uh, ah, he remembered. How much do I owe him for dinner? Right, let, let's do some more of these commands. So maybe I can actually just pull out my transactions here in my, my chat message. Uh, that's far too many transactions. Let's whittle that down. Let's just go for the transactions yesterday. Um, those of you who know Edinburgh know that I apparently walked all over town last night. Uh, but the Indian Cavalry Club, great, great restaurant. I'm, I'm angling for some freebies there. Um, so it's four people, so you know, uh, say it's 35 pounds that Rui owes me and I'll chase down the others uh, after the talk um, for their imaginary 35 pounds. So what he's actually be able to do here is, is send over the money um, within the chat thing. 
Oh, and this is where it gets really exciting, because what I'm waiting for is a notification. Um, oh, come on. Yeah, look, we've got a number one notification from Bankbot. My bot, who's sitting there waiting for me, tells me I got ah, 45 pounds from Rui. Right, let's go and set that right. Um, It probably is, even though it's, what, yeah, half past three in the afternoon. Um, I'll, I'll pay him the tenor back. I'll be good. Um, so here, you know, this slightly awkward syntax. You know, we'll make this better as interaction designers. Trust me. Um, we'll get there. But I'll give him back his 10 pounds, and it tells me that payment's in progress, and so on and so forth. Um, but what you saw there was, was not chat. That was just something in context. It was very convenient, very handy for me to be able to do that. Um, without having to, to go to a different place for it. Um, so now you want to know more about it. Uh, and this is, this is a big thing for me. Um, so Don Norman back in the 1990s made this point that uh, interfaces are annoying. They get in the way. All I want is to be able to sort of express what I would want, like to do and for that thing to, to happen or not happen and whatever it is I'm after. Um, and that's kind of the history of, of computing has been about getting those tools, that interface, out of the way. You know, we started with punch cards, which was the most abstract way of trying to get a computer to do something for you. Then we moved towards command line, which was a little bit better. And we had the, the sort of mouse pointer and, and keyboard, which is, again, you know, still a bit weird to be doing a thing down here for a screen up there. Touchscreen took it a bit closer, and we could start to manipulate the objects, objects on the screen directly. Um, and, and this is a progression towards something known as NUI from GUI. Um, and that stands for natural user interface. And, and the way I sort of like to think of natural user interfaces is, is where the GUI was kind of defined by that, that term WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get. We have to aff afford everything that it can do. Uh, a natural user interface is WYDIWYG, obviously. Um, what you do is what you get. We don't have to afford these things. You just are able to interact with it, and it happens. That's, that's the end game. That's what I'd like. We're not quite there yet, but we're heading down that direction. Um, so let me give you another little example of, of what that might look like. Um, I'll go back to Messenger this time. Now suppose I was drunk from that night out we had last night, um, and as it happens, I woke up a bit groggy, uh, and I've lost my wallet. Now I'm messaging my friends, and I thought, well, I'll message my bank as well and say I've lost my card. And my, card knows I've, uh, my bank knows I've got two cards with that bank. Um, yeah, okay, I lost my wallet, so it's actually both. Um, and it says it'll block them for me, and then it takes all the hassle off me. It just says, okay, well, I've, I've blocked them. I'll be back in a couple of hours. If you haven't found them by then, we'll sort out new ones. But in the meantime, um, you know, go back to bed because you're probably still worse for wear. Um, that doesn't seem like such a big deal, but uh, last time I lost my cards, so I sat there panicking, going, oh, what phone number do I find? I log on to the internet banking. Where's the button for the lost card thing? It's terrifyingly hard to find. I just want to be able to say what I want to do. I just lost my card, and the bank can deal with that. And kind of, kind of preempting Henny's talk after mine, um, this, in terms of accessibility, could be huge when we're doing this stuff. Instead of having to sort of interpret an entire screen's worth of affordances that tell me what this system can or can't do, I can just say what I want to do, and it just happens. Um, but, but a new e, this natural user interface, isn't just about natural language. It's not just about talking or typing at it. Um, it's about a whole load of other things, adding in GUI elements, adding in gestures. I mean, like when I'm conversing with a person, I might bring in diagrams and paper and whiteboards and all sorts of other implements to help me actually with that conversation. Um, and, and the messaging apps are letting you do that with structured messages and extensions. And there's a wonderful uh, concept. This isn't actually yet entirely possible um, that a guy called Isil Uzum um, produced on Dribble. Bizarrely, it's actually you know meaningful content on Dribble. Um, and he's showing you here a very sort of uh, GUI-laden interaction. This is two people talking about um, having a holiday together, booking some flights. And you see that as he goes through, this is kind of filling out forms, but part of the conversation. These elements of, of GUI are being brought in as and when appropriate um, to actually complete the task that he's focusing on here with the other person. They're doing this in collaboration within Messenger, in theory. Um, and actually, an awful lot of this is now possible uh, with the recent update to Messenger. Um, you know, Every time you see those Messenger updates, you wonder what's happening. They're adding a new bit of this kind of fancy stuff in there. But hey, so um, they're finishing that off. I'll jump on ahead. 
So you might rightly question whether or not that is a conversation. Now, I would say it is. Um, conversation isn't about chat. Conversation is about interchanging thoughts, ideas, intent. Um, and I can do that in many different forms. Uh, natural language is a big part of that, but there are other elements to it as well, these other GUI elements. Um, but as designers, this kind of conversational thinking and thinking of it as an interchange means we focus on that interchange, not the medium of that interchange. And um, we actually think about how I want to, my service to interact with a person. Um, when you're doing this conversational thinking, you imagine you've got a person with unlimited knowledge and resources and ability to do things, which technology gives it, um, what service would I offer? And I can have an infinite number of these people because normally the technology can take care of that as well. Uh, and when I think about how I would sort of single-handedly offer a service to a person um, with my computer at my fingertips, um, suddenly different ideas start to pop out, different ways of doing things. Um, so yeah, I'll give you some examples. Calm down. Um, so one of the things you might do is just take care of mundane things that are kind of boring but important. Um, and there's a company called X.AI over in the States, and they've got a, 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 a service whereby I can CC Amy, um, my, my bot friend, onto an email to actually organize a meeting. Um, so she takes care of just arranging the meeting. That's all she does for me. But sometimes that can be quite monotonous with the to, to and fro you have with the person on the other side. Um, a different one entirely. Uh, I don't entirely understand the business case behind this, but never mind. Um, this is a company called Trim. Now they offer a service whereby they, they look at your subscriptions and see if you want any of them. And if you say, I don't want it, or I want to cancel it, it does the cancellation for you. It, it's looking after you, taking care of you. And that's not something you'd ever really think of putting into a, a normal app, a normal GUI. Um, at least I wouldn't. Maybe you guys are better at this than I am. Another way of doing it is, is kind of being part of day-to-day -day life. Um, so let's go to the little demo again. So imagine I've just bought some cinema tickets. My bank says, uh, you just bought the cinema tickets, you haven't got much of your entertainment budget left. Yeah. Oops. Um, but while I'm in budget mode, uh, budgets that I've set with that bank, um, how about food? I'm fairly confident I've not been as extravagant on food this, this week. Uh, oh, you're right, it's telling me I've still got quite a lot of budget left. But actually there's even more there. Suddenly it's, it's doing the big data analysis to recognize that I don't tend to spend all of that budget on food. Um, so from the context, it can infer that actually I've got a little bit of money that I could put towards the entertainment. So it can be a bit more subtle and clever about this um, and actually help me in a way I want to rather than present things as black and white, uh, you know, sliders and limits and all this kind of stuff. The different thing would be to sort of help me keep sight of my long-term interests, something we're typically quite bad at, so it might look after my, my savings and investments for me. Um, come on. Don't fall over on the last one. We are going to fall over on the last one. Ha ha ha, I've spanned myself, excellent. Um, so it's saying here that it noticed I got spare cash in my current account um, and I haven't used up my ICE allowance. For those of you not in, from the UK, an ICE is just a tax-free thing that we get and f up to a certain amount. Um, this is a, something my mum nags me about every year, which is where I got this idea for this service from. Um, but it's fishing here, it's asking me if, I, if, I, if I'm keeping that money there for a reason or if I want to put it across into my eyes. So even if I said it's there because I just want a buffer, um, that's fine, that's information that service now knows. Um, so let's say we transfer it. Um, so it now it tells me how much it reckons I've got spare um, because it's done that analysis. So let's say we'll transfer 500 of that across and it's done. Suddenly I'm taking better care of my savings and my investments just because this thing's nudged me in a way that if I had a little financial advisor sort of peeking over my shoulder constantly, which is what that could be, um, might do for me. Um, so this is, you know, this is, I think this is quite cool. Hopefully you do as well. Um, and you're right to say this is early days. And then there are loads of open questions. And back to Boone's point earlier, we don't have best practices for this stuff yet. There are a few starting to appear. But to me, that's the exciting part, because I don't get distracted by best practices. I just have to make it up as I go along. We're in this sort of gold rush era for this type of technology. And you can tell we're in a gold rush era because beards and check shirts were a thing back then. <laughs> um, beards and check shirts now, yeah? Okay. Obvious. Um, 
I do, though, I think this is the beginning of something really quite significant, a significant change in the types of um, systems that we can provide. Um, if I look back at a really important milestones in our lives, because I've apparently lived for a very long time, um, we had the printing press. It was the first time we started to liberate knowledge and information. Um, then libraries started to disseminate that a bit further. And then the internet was that final explosion that meant that suddenly there were no barriers to getting to knowledge. Anyone without necessarily money or, or privilege could get to that knowledge. And I, and I think that conversation potentially is, is this last building block for really democratizing services. Suddenly I can have a financial advisor in my pocket at no cost. I don't have to pay a guy. I don't have to be someone with enough money um, to be able to have access to someone that cares about providing me an expert service because we can do it at scale, at cheap with these technologies. And the interaction with it, this conversational interaction with it is very natural and open to many, many people. So I don't even have that barrier of entry. Now, you might think that I'm talking utter nonsense. Good for you. Um, but I think this type of thinking, this idea of thinking of a service as a conversation will make you look differently at your services. If you're just thinking in terms of apps and websites and stuff, stop that. Start thinking about a conversation. You might still translate it into apps and websites, but you might think about it as one of these kind of conversational chatbot -y types of systems. And I'm glad you're convinced. Thank you. Wow, you lot woke up in that uh, talk. Um, uh, right, where do I start? Are you ready for some questions? I can anticipate an awful lot of them. Um, <laughs> My bot took care of it for you. <laughs> <laughs> right, which one to start on? Um, okay, here's one from, uh, do you know if Facebook MS true AI as they claim, given the analysis and, re analysis and response time is an emotion, human like an NLP replies. So is it real, real, it kind of real? Kind of real, I think is the best way to put it. There, this is, this is, this is kind of a good example of the problem that this thinking presents. So they genuinely have AI happening in Facebook M, um, and it's, it is quite sophisticated, um, not that much more sophisticated than other worlds, but they have a huge bank of customer support there as well. You know, I showed you that diagram of the idea that you've got AI and people dealing with things. Um, now, they, they have a real problem because they're aiming to do everything, and trying to automate everything, any request ever, means that when you're trying to teach the AI, You've almost got an infinite universe to try and deal with. They're not far after, off actually trying to both do the chat thing, but also all the integrations into hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, of APIs to be able to support that. Um, so they are trying, um, but that's why it's, Facebook M is limited to San Francisco only, I believe, and it's only got about 3,000 users. And if you think 3,000 users to, I believe it's about 200 or 300 support staff, that's quite a high ratio. Um, they're investing in it big time. Uh, the UX chaps asked, conversational commerce, it's a hot topic of conversation in retail right now, but is it really worth investing in? I don't know, um, is the honest answer. Uh, this is, this is technology is coming along. Um, I don't think anyone has created good enough experience to, to get over the fact that some people just think it's kind of rubbish. I, 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 that's why I emphasize the, the not chat thing. Um, I don't think commerce is about chat. Um, I, I want some other kind of service. It's a different way of thinking about it. I, mean, I, had, I was speaking to someone at Amazon, um, and they, they were trying to create a chatbot to do the Amazon search results in a messaging app. And obviously, you can't put hundreds or thousands of results in a little conversation. That's absurd. Um, and my point to them was, well, well, maybe you should be turning it on its head and, and forget about that initial search. Maybe it's that I bought a shirt, or yeah, let's say a shirt, um, from Amazon a year ago. Um, they can maybe guess that that shirt's a bit worn um, or should be a bit worn by then and hint me and say, well, we've got three new shirts by the same designer. Um, maybe you want to buy one of these. You know, it, it, or some other kind of shopping assistant type of thing rather than being the search. That search is probably never going to work on yeah. as a chat thing. It's interesting that you say that because I don't know if you've heard of Thread.com, mm -hmm. which is an online store 
currently for men, but there is going to be open up for women soon, apparently. Um, and that, you basically register on that service, and there are personal shoppers on the other end of it, which put together your outfits based on likes. Yep. Um, but that's not conversational, it's purely like notification and but it, then it, pushing it to... It could be, it's it the same type of thinking, and I think that's the key, is that a good, that's a good example of where they've applied this, the service conversational type of thinking, and they've decided to go with an app and a yeah. website, because when they started, you didn't really have the opportunity to do this AI stuff. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if they've got a chatbot or something to that again coming. Um, I actually weirdly wrote an article yesterday about uh, a letter from Future Me, I think it was called, and it was similar to the, what you've talked about with regards to chat, but it was all voice. Um, and obviously you've got like Amazon's device and now Google have just released one. How do you see it moving from chat based within apps to voice? I'd, I'm not convinced there is going to be a massive switch. I think the two are definitely going to run in parallel. Um, and the exact, I, I guess the banking thing is a really good example of why I don't think the voice bit's going to take off in every corner because if I asked my bank for my balance and it's on a speaker, I don't really want it to announce that to the whole world. I want it just for me. Um, but if I'm in a busy place, if I'm in a bar and I want to check my balance, the technology is getting better to deal with that kind of background noise, but it's still kind of a bit of a weird thing to me to be doing. And we see with, um, well, especially teenagers these days, the idea of being phoned and having to talk to someone is really intrusive. The idea of messaging and chatting is very normal to them. So I think text and voice is going to run in parallel. Um, I do think it's the same type of thinking. It's both are conversational and they're both about pulling in other, other elements. The piece with me to the, where voice potentially is going to fall down actually is because there's no real interface to bring in the GUI bits, to bring in the other ways of interaction and having that conversation. Okay, that's it. I'll just do one more question since there were so many. Uh, there were far too many to actually ask in this session, by the way. Um, if apps are all going to be within Messenger, where does that leave UI designers? Uh, in an awkward place. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I think that's why it's also important. Is those GUI elements will remain in there. There is still going to be straight up sort of pixel pushing UI design, but there are new skills we're going to have to get better at and be able to design with language and words as our material instead of um, you know, input boxes and buttons. Uh, I, you know, with the guys on my team who I've have sometimes forced to do some of this stuff, some of them hate it. I mean, they, they sit there going like, I can't, I can't be the wordsmith. I can't, I don't want to think in terms of tone of voice and work through all of that. Um, others have taken to it like a duck to water. It is, it is just another, yet another thing that we're going to have to know and be able to deal with. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be more. I see that as exciting and fun to have to do more hard stuff. Um, others may not, but uh, I'll try and create some best practices for you and you can copy those. Cool. Well, it has raised a, a huge amount of uh, conversation. Um, and I, I always love talks like this where it can kind of broaden people's minds to new things, even though it might, it might seem like it's ahead of its time almost, mm -hmm. but it's something that usually comes in fairly quickly once a lot of people kind of get traction with it. So thank you very much. Great. Thank you.